Hey, good morning. Guys, today we're going to talk about the Drake L4B. We're going to take it apart a little bit. We're going to fix a couple very small things on this, and then we're going to put it back together and run it. If you are a first-time viewer to this channel, help me help you. Show your support. Click the like button if you could. All right, guys, let's get on to it. Drake L4B. So what we got here is the Drake L4B. It's a pair of three 500 Zs. Now, I've been lucky enough that uh, I've got one or two friends that, as they travel through this universe, they look out for me. And when they go places, you know, like ham fests and stuff, and they see equipment like this for sale that's in pristine condition, um, they'll purchase it for me. And I said, sure, man, at that price, we could probably do something with it. We're not going to be too upside down by the time you pay to ship it all the way here. And then we got to ship it on to somebody else and I spend all my time looking at it. So when one of these things come in, I try to go over it top to bottom. Now, this is a really good example of a Drake L4B, by the way. This thing's in really clean order. Um, one of the problems it had was the primary power indicator light and the high light for the high voltage on the sideband or vice versa, was out. So we ordered these. These are the exact, there's the old ones, the exact drop-in replacements, exact part, same color, same manufacturer, by the way. We found these in Arizona um, for the lights. So this is still 100% stock. Now, as I was running over it and I was oiling some stuff, like I was cleaning the blower out, you know, and just giving it the once for all. I mean, look at the bottom of this thing. That has never been touched. And if we zoom down to the port part where I worked on it, you'd be pretty hard pressed even until I was in there. So this thing is pristine. This is a really good example of this amplifier. Now, even when you go to the Drake webpage and you look at the the paperwork they've got for this thing, I mean, look look at the blower now. I went in there and I cleaned that all out. Got it all cleaned up. Anyhow, when you go to the Drake page, even their pictures are not. They've got kind of an older, dustier, dirtier version than this. So, I mean, it's just been pulling a lot of little lint balls and stuff out of it. That's all I've been doing to it so far. Um, so we got all the indicator lights working. And we were able to locate some vintage uh, light bulbs to go in this thing. So, as I'm going through all my last checks, I thought, well, man, do I need to lube the plate in the tune? Because where this was at, it came out of the desert. And usually things that come out of the desert, um, the oil gets a little gummy over time, right? So I was sitting here and I was lubing up stuff, and I was sitting there spinning the, the plate adjustment knob. And it has a tendency to kind of slip unless you put a little bit of upward torque on it. Well, we can't have that. So there's no outside torque adjustment. So to get in there and take this portion off so I can take it apart and figure out which clutch plate's slipping on the inside of this, because there's a passive clutch, there's a reduction gear and a, a passive clutch to make this work, okay? So that the dial indicator on the front will actually move in correspondence with the knob and then the capacitor is actually gonna move. I gotta take the face off this thing. I'm not excited about this not. Sometimes you'll fix one problem and in the process of taking something apart you're going to create another one. So this thing is beautiful. The faceplate's not scratched up. The tin's fairly straight on this thing by the way. I mean it's clean. So and the tubes that are in this now are, are fairly good. The tubes that were in it when it came here, one of them had a short in it and was not putting out anything, right? So 
So, anyhow, we uh, got a set of uh, good IMAX that we had sitting here from a three uh, from a Henry that we did, and we put these in here. Now we got to change the anode tits out to the stock ones that came with this amp. They're over here. Those are the ones that came stock with the Drake. Those anode tits. And this tube's still good. It's still at about 90% output. But it's partner in crime. It does dick. It sits there and glows pretty. I guess it'd make a decent bench light. But, yeah, it is what it is. This is interesting how they held down these meter movements. They've got little tiny screws that aren't screwed in. They're just pinned against the plastic right up here in this leading edge. But let me get this thing stripped down, and we'll be back. We're going to talk more about this, and then I'm going to get this put back together. We're going to run it. But like I said, this whole guy's for sale, so give me just a second. We'll talk more about it. This is able to slide the face forward. Um, <clears throat> to take this thing completely off, I'd actually have to undo the power wires that go to these, these lights, which are actually neon bulbs, by the way. Um, I don't want to do that. I can get to all the bits that I need to right here now. I just didn't have enough access space. This is gold. This is more valuable than gold right here, you guys. Let me turn the viewfinder around and make sure I'm in frame. This is more valuable than gold. This little piece of cellophane is what gives Drake its signature window color on its meters. If I bend that, break that, or crack that, ah, it knocks so much value out of the box. This is our little clutch mechanism here. Now, why I've got this off, let me pull the camera off here. Hold on. Let's move on in here. This is really neat. This is your band switch, right? So you have your output band switch. Then through a plastic chain drive system, you've got your input band switch, which is down here in the bottom left-hand corner. There's no sag. There's no nothing on those. It's beautiful. It's in beautiful shape. But what we're after to work on today is this. I got to take this, pull this out, and work on this. So I'm going to stay focused on that. But this thing is, God, it's just in, in just perfect shape. All right, give me a second. The face on that, not even a scratch on it. Oh, it's beautiful. Hmm. Hmm. That's a shame. Same shaft size. And, I mean, it's, it's slipping a little bit, but I mean, that's, that's a considerable amount of torque. I wonder if that thing was just not mounted, like locked down on there. Because the Allen wrench is back, or the Allen set screws back right off. I mean, like right away. That thing's moving real easy. You guys got to be really careful. Like, if you go and add oil, your tuners, which I strongly suggest you don't do, um, very, very sparingly, by the way. And this has got World War II cosmolenic cause of cancer, cause you to have a third testicle grow out of your right eye. Schmoo on it, by the way. So, if, I mean, if you're going to oil anything, you got to do it in just the right spots and use just a little bit. <clears throat> well, I don't know, this isn't showing me... I just don't want to go through the process of ripping this apart unless I absolutely have to. There's got to be a secondary set screw or something for the clutch mechanism in this thing. So what does this say on it? Made where? Made in England. 
That makes sense. Hmm. I'm gonna play with it. I'll be back. So I totally get how this works now. So it's a clutch system. Okay. Let me pan the camera up a little bit. There's a clutch system that's on the inside of this thing. There's a pressure collar ring that sits and presses down on this little bent piece of copper shim, which is kind of spring loaded. Okay. Sorry, I gotta watch what I'm doing and try and pay attention to the camera too. And, and and have it zoomed in far enough that all you kids get to enjoy. Okay, so then there's a secondary plate. And this plate applies pressure onto four ball bearings. See these bearings? There's no physical connection between the shaft, which is what hangs out the front of the amplifier and the knob, and the ball bearings in the raceway other than pressure. See these bearings are what hold the shaft in place. They sit around that beautifully machined, probably some guy in the 1940s or 50s sat around and made 10 million of these, right? In his, his career in a machine shop and spit that out. There's a little tiny raceway those bearings sit on, okay? So the only thing that direct allows the amount of torque to transfer across the shaft is how much pressure is applied to these bearings and how freely these bearings can turn. So let's go ahead and put this back together. So the bearings sit in the housing and they ride on this raceway. There's a little indentation there that it rides on. Then you've got the other side of the raceway. It sits over that. And then we've got our little tiny piece of copper. And then we've got our pressure plate. And these four little tines are everything that control how much pressure is applied to this spring-loaded plate, which there in turn directly applies the pressure to the bearing edges. And so if it's loose, the bearings can just spin on the, sh on the outer shaft, the inner shaft here. It is free float on by. So when I go and I press this back together, if I over crimp the set tabs just a little bit, just a hair, we'll be in top shape. I'm going to concentrate on it. Give me a second. I didn't believe my mom when I was a kid. She says, you know, son, you, you don't understand the advantages of growing up poor yet. She's right. The older I get, the more grateful I am that I had to always take other people's garbage, shit they were willing to throw away, and um, figure out how to make it work, repair it, and make it to where I could sell it to somebody else to get money. Or make it to where somebody would be like, damn, dude, you're lucky you've got that. You know, living in a little raggedy-ass house. Single in with mom and all energy. Okay, so, we've uh, put a little pressure, ugh, pressure plate back together. Pardon me, I'm stuttering here this morning. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's... It's really quite impressive how much better that is. If we bring it up in here and we get it to focus, you'll see that we just barely adjusted that plate down just a little bit, but there's still a play in the crush plate that's in there. Yeah. So let me reinstall this and we'll get back on with the for sale video. Now with a little bit of fidgeting around with it. Oh, it's perfect. No slip. I had to take it out two more times and adjust it. I had to adjust that little pressure plate in there and how hard I had that thing crimped over. Okay, well. I don't have any oil on my hands here because we're about ready to touch the holier on holies. The trademark thing that makes the Drake L4B displays so legendary and characteristic. 
think I read that on their web page. Okay. All right. Slide you back in your hole. Goal is to take it apart and nobody even know you were there. Except for the giant BBI sticker we're gonna slap on it someplace. <laughs> Not. That won't happen. Glad that was simple. I gotta be careful. Um, I sold an amplifier here not too long ago that my name was attached to. And I didn't verify that the ALC circuit was working in it. And I mean, the thing I did just—it looks so friggin' new. And everything else on it was like pristine. Anyhow, um, I ended up having to eat that. I ended up eating the cost of that pretty substantially. So to take a couple minutes and really verify that everything is just perfect. Like taking a minute to line up all the faceplate screws on the Drake just because I know subconsciously people are not going to notice it, but they notice it. It's like on the outside of my amplifiers, all the fan grills have to be pointed the same way, and usually all the screw heads have to be orientated straight with each other. Because it's like you see it, but you don't really see it. You know what I mean? It's a little fine detail that fine detail that really makes the difference to some people. I mean, you can just slap something together. Like, here you go. Now, the person that ultimately ends up buying this thing I'm going to ask you one simple question because I'm totally willing to do this for you before this thing leaves here because I'm selling this as almost a completely 100% stock device, okay? If I was going to change anything on this amplifier, it'd be to pull these stupid chokes out and ground the grids. Be real careful because I don't want to slip and scuff the face. There's no scratches on this thing. I don't want to enter me anymore. So if you want me to come back in here and um, ground the grids out, it means we're going to bypass this choke and we're going to ding, ding, ding. And then another little ground wire. I'll put a ground wire here and a ground wire here. Like this, I got a little piece of vanilla, like a solid piece of copper strap or silver strap that comes through, and that's that's very nicely done. So we'll get this running. I'm gonna get all the knobs put on the front of this thing, and uh, we're gonna change the anode tops. And when we come back, this thing was going to be running, but uh, I got to remember to check my ALC. Let's say a couple burnt knobs or a couple burnt LED or light bulbs. And maybe a set of tubes. A little bit of time schmooing around with stuff isn't too bad for a little ham fest find. That thing's in great shape. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so you have the center shaft, then you've got the planetary gear that moves around that shaft. 
and they're held together by pressure. So what I'm verifying is that there's not too much slippage between, slippage, like that's a real term, there's not a lot of slipping that's taking place between the ball bearings, the inner shaft, and the outer body. The outer body is indicated by this red dot. The inner shaft is inter indicated by the knob. Let's get one full turn worth of revolution. Bring it right back to where we started. No slipping. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Had to get my OCD on there. My legendary Drake L4B green window Godot. Two iMac 3500Zs. Yeah. A legendary green glow. Okay. Alright. We're going to run around the band here real quick. And... I'm just going to run this in the 10 meter position. This thing is so pristine, I don't think I need to go through the processes of tuning and loading it on every single band. I think you all get it now. It works. Okay, so here's your power supply. Now out of a scale of 1 to 10, this is about a 9.5, 9.2 as far as drakes are concerned. The cabinet isn't butchered, still has all the stock screws, and everything is fully functional. No dents, no dings, no rust, no drama, no damage. It's pretty straightforward. So now what we've got here is a voltmeter, and we've got that hooked up to our AL or AGC circuit. Okay. And what that's going to show us is as we create power, it's going to show us negative voltage. Now, I didn't test this on the last amateur amplifier that I sold, and apparently there was something wrong with it. But... We, me and the gentleman, we come to a mutual understanding. We got it all worked out. I bought him some parts. Thing got fixed. So I'm going to start testing that on every one. You're going to, I'm going to get an analog meter that just plugs directly in. But all it is is an RCA jack that plugs into the back of the amp. As the amplifier produces power, it creates a negative voltage. The negative voltage there thusly feeds back and talks to your radio. It allows you to keep your radio at a full output power. But then you can control... The amount of power that the amplifier puts out by adjusting your ALC circuit. And uh, it allows you to be able to go from full throttle from the amplifier directly to the radio and not have to do any other further adjustments. It's kind of a neat, neat circuit, neat idea. But it's a way of keeping guys from blasting past the legal limit and having a secondary control other than the power knob on the radio. Okay, so real quick, um, I got my little two pill set up and we're going to use the 2950. This is a 1,000 watt slug and 1,000 watt PEP. Okay, 1,000 watt slug and average, 5 watt slug and reverse. So let me show you what I'm doing for drive here. We're about 210 watts peak into this thing, which, because this is a 10 to 1 amplifier, we're going to take that 1,000 watt slug. Oh, look at me. I forgot one little small thing. We're an operate. Operate, standby. So, that is your AGC adjust for this particular amp. We're going to turn it all the way to 11. I mean 10. It goes to 10. Sorry, we're not, we're not in a spinal tap. Step on a pedal. Hello. Gone. Okay. So, we're going to put that down in 5X. So that's now reading like a 5,000 watt scale. Hello. my teacher. I'll get back to you guys. Sorry about that. When he calls, I usually stop everything I'm doing and we chat for a minute. So, okay. So we're now down on the 5X scale and we're going to put about 220, 210 watts of drive in this thing. And I'm going to show you that the AGC is working on this or the ALC, however you want to enunciate it for whatever. Hello. 2,500 watts in peak. Hello, audio. A couple hundred bird. And we're going to show us our negative voltage. Hello. Sixty-three negative volts. So now, of course, if you're going to tie this into a modern radio like an ICOM seventy-three hundred or twenty-six hundred or something like that, you want to get 
um, the pad that sits between the, <laughs> the soft key and the pad unit that'll run the amp and it'll buffer this because most radios today will only take I believe a negative of four volts so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna reach over there and I'm gonna turn the mic gain up and we're gonna put a little bit more drive into this L4B and we're gonna max it out so we're gonna show that the tubes are still 100 percent so now put about 400 watts in this thing Four, four hundred and fifty watts, and we're gonna run it all the way out to the maximum. So here we go. Cannot do this one-handed. Let me peek this out here real quick. That's all she's gonna give us. and 600 bird. And I don't suggest you drive it like that. Just demonstrating axle absolute max driven. But oh, 75 negative volts. That's enough to smoke the pepper. Well, guys, this is the Drake L4B. Like I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is like a 9.2, 9.5, somewhere in there. And it works in all bands, all modes. So on that note, you guys, I'm going to get on to the next thing. I think I need to jump onto this Henry next that I got over here that's been sitting here for a month and a half waiting for me to put my hands upon it. If you want this amplifier, call this number. That's all there is to it. You give me a ring, I'll hook you up. Gentlemen, my name is BBI, and without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Give me a call. And if this is the first time you've ever watched my channel, do me a favor. Help me out, help you out. Click subscribe. I appreciate you. See you guys.